Today I have something really exciting to share with you, making what was once a dream of mine for so long finally come true. Join me as we dive headfirst into the mesmerizing world of FPV drones and the building process that goes into making one. I'm Max and in this video I unveil the full process of how I built my own powerhouse of an FPV drone that can create cinematic flight video from the tips of your fingers. From carefully selecting the most powerful components to fine tuning every aspect of its performance, we'll explore the detailed process that turns a mere pilot of parts into a skybound marvel that defies gravity itself. <sighs> this is my first dive into the FPV drone hobby, so things are about to get interesting. I'll start by showing the items I ordered for this FPV drone, but first let's skip the unboxing. I chose a set of 6S 1855 KV brushless motors, a 5 megapixel Razer Mini FPV cam with a TX800 video transmitter, an Express LRS Nano receiver, a SpeedyB F4 flight controller ESC stack, and a set of color changing LEDs for the drone's arms. Everything will be run from a 6S 22 volt LiPo battery pack. Then we've got this 5 inch FPV carbon fiber frame kit with standoffs, screws, a battery strap, and some 3D printed accessories included. I I also ordered four sets of 5-inch polycarbonate propellers, a balanced charger unit to charge up the drone's 6-cell battery with different settings. All up with the goggles and transmitter, it cost me around 550 US dollars for my setup. All parts that make up the drone came to about 350 dollars. So I'll begin assembling the drone by first installing the carbon fiber arms to the base plate, putting the frame together. Then comes the standoff pieces and any additional supporting carbon fiber bumpers, all secured with little bolts. With the frame mostly put together, it is time to install these 2207 type brushless DC motors. The 1800 kV rating is great for powering heavier quadcopters like this one that'll carry a GoPro. Each motor is secured with four Allen bolts that contain Loctite. Next we're going to install one of the stack modules being the 4 channel 50 amp electronic speed controller. To secure it, I'll first insert these four rubber grommets into the frame with some dental floss. I learnt this handy trick from another FPV drone pilot. Now I can pop in these four longer bolts followed by the ESC module. To tidy up the motor wires, I'll heat on some sections of heat shrink tubing. This also protects the wires from being slit by the zip ties. I'll have the wires connect to the pads by being brought around inwards which helps keep connections tidy and protected. Applying flux before soldering helps melt and mend the tin a lot better. In case you are wondering, the iron I'm using is the Miniware TS-80P Smart Soldering Iron. It has been my personal favorite and I've been using it for the past few months without an issue. Highly reliable, portable, has all sorts of handy settings and heats up really quick for the job. To purchase your TS-80P, click the link in the description below. Having soldered the motor wires, they should look like this, swinging over the ESC board. Now I can tie down the wires with a zip tie for each arm. For stabilizing power ripples from the drone, I'll solder a 1000 microfarad capacitor at the power terminals where the battery connector will go. Setting the soldering iron to its max temperature of 400 degrees Celsius should be enough to get some bigger blobs of lead coupling the power connector wires to the board. My tip would be to solder the capacitor as close to the battery connector as possible. Now for the flight controller's installation. Before sliding it on, I'll connect it to the ESC stack with this short cable. Only then pop it on top. Once secured, I'll install the SpeedyB TX800 VTX which will transmit video to my goggles during flight. One mistake here is I'm wiring it to the flight controller without twisting the wires first to limit the amount of noise, but other than that, the VTX is now connected. Now I can get on to installing the FPV camera itself. Oops, I've run into my first obstacle. I picked the wrong camera for the frame, at least it's only a millimeter and a half off from fitting in. A bit of sanding of the sides should do the trick to make it fit snug.
Sure enough, the camera now fits and is connected to the flight controller. Here I have the ELRS Nano Long Range Receiver with a T antenna. Let's install it and wire it to the flight controller board. To get its antenna to reach the tail of the drone, I'll have to replace it for the longer one that was included. The receiver antenna is secured at the back with one of the 3D printed parts that was included in the frame kit. For now, I'll attach the basic dipole antenna to the VTX for transmitting video feed. Before installing the controller stack's plastic cover, I'll mount a set of RGB LED lights on the arms of the drone which electrically also connects to the flight controller. After securing all the light strips on the rear parts of the drone's arms with zip ties, I can now close off the top of the flight controller with the cover to protect against dust and other particles. For the landing gear, I'm giving the drone's arms a small block of foam each. This should keep the frame from touching the ground. After securing the top frame plate, I'll also give it this adhesive grippy mat which should keep the battery from sliding. I got a helping hand from a kind friend who printed me all the other 3D printed protective parts that fit onto the drone. Each one was designed specifically to fit the Mark IV carbon fiber frame. With these TPU parts added on, the quadcopter is looking clean. I had the side covers printed to protect the internals from splashes and dirt getting in. I also had the tailpiece replaced for a more compact one. The arm ends protected with thick bumpers, and the front and rear ends of the drone protected with bumpers underneath as well. The drone itself without props, battery, or a GoPro on weighs around 380 grams. When attaching the 3D printed parts, I also gave the receiver its own pocket to sit in, mounted on top of the VTX. Plugging in the quadcopter to my PC and opening up a drone configurator software called Betaflight will allow me to tune and configure certain values that the drone needs to find. Here you can see the gyro sensor in action displaying the orientation of the drone as I move it around. For ports I'll enable a couple of lines for the video transmitter and receiver. I'll then fill out the VTX table with frequencies. For viewing the video feed, I purchased these $90 5.8GHz iFlight analog FPV goggles which work good at a close range with minimal latency. The next thing I'll do is run a test to see that the motors spin in the right direction according to how drones are supposed to produce lift. There you can see one motor spinning anti-clockwise when it should spin clockwise, and I can change that in the configurator. With the propeller loosely fitted on, I can see that now all motors are spinning the correct way. The transmitter I'm using to control this quadcopter with is the RadioMaster TX12 Mini Radio with the new Express LRS protocol. I won't show the details of how I configured it, but it took some adjusting before the drone would receive the correct inputs. I'll also program specific functions such as arming and disarming that are toggled by the transmitter switches. Following rotor ride's step-by-step -step guide on tuning, I'll adjust the rates and the drone's PID values according to how he's done it to achieve better performance. Now I can plug in the battery again, this time binding the transmitter to the drone. There as you can see, the arm switch works as configured and the motors increase in speed as I move the throttle stick. Configuring and filling out all the necessary information this drone needs in order to fly was a bit challenging for me, but fun all the same. So I've left links below the video in the description to video guides that show how to set up each and every aspect on an FPV drone to get things configured correctly. You should check them out. And with that, my FPV drone is ready to take on the remaining parts and have its first flight test.
This is another one of the parts I had printed, a low profile mount to hold my old GoPro Hero 4 action camera. I'll secure it simply with a couple of zip ties. The balance charger kit also came with this battery meter alarm module. I find it super handy, so I'll also secure it to the drone. I got this pack of gem fan propellers and a transparent light blue to match the motors. I'll secure them on, followed by a self-locking nut on each one. Securing the 6S LiPo battery on with a Velcro strap, the drone's now ready for flight. Two seconds later. Well, I let my excitement get the better of me and crashed it into the ground, breaking two props in my off-camera nighttime test flight. Good thing I ordered more. With the GoPro inserted, the drone weighs a whopping 770 grams, only slightly more than my DJI Mavic drone. Before I had even built the drone, I actually practiced in an FPV simulator on my computer with just the transmitter to get a hang of the controls. Okay guys, so now I'm out here in this big wide open field. It's a nice area with short grass and very few trees, so there's not too much to bump into as long as I keep away from them as I'm flying. Got the drone here, my transmitter and set of goggles. So I'm going to power it up and let's give this beast a test flight. It's made in flight. So we'll plug it in here. All right. It's recording. my first ever flight, I tried not to do anything risky, especially because I had issues with the video feed that cut off way too soon in flight. So the drone's been flying pretty well, I feel I have good control over it, everything's good except the video feed actually breaks up about after 50 meters as I'm flying away and it just gets really grainy so I have to return it to myself. I combated this issue by changing out the current wire antenna for an SMA connector which allowed me to then put on a longer antenna and after also twisting the VTX's wires to reduce noise, I ended up being able to fly around trees and get farther from myself without the video cutting off. <laughs> Some tips I can give from my experience of building my first FPV drone would be to always twist groups of wires that involve signal transfer to reduce noise, and a thing that would make for cleaner FPV feed would be to keep a common power line from the camera to the VTX. This can eliminate a lot of noise. Be sure to flux connections before soldering and make sure you're using a leaded solder instead of cheap soldering tin as this could prevent wires from jumping off due to cracking from shocks or collisions. Tighten any screw you think can come loose from the drone with a bit of Loctite. You wouldn't want a mishap occurring in the air from a motor coming loose. 
A thing that made binding work for me in regards to the transmitter and receiver of the drone is to quickly plug the battery connector in three times, then leave it powered on for the receiver to get into binding mode. About tuning, especially if you're starting out, I recommend you follow a video guide and copy an expert's rates and PID settings to get the most out of your quad and to not mess things up. If you're into FPV and have some more tips to share, I'd like to hear them, so please feel free to leave them in the comments below. This was one exciting project to have been a part of bringing to life. I turned a bunch of carefully selected parts ordered online into a home-built FPV freestyle drone that I can now make cinematic videos with for hobby purposes or even as my potential future business. If you want to copy my build or assemble a drone similar to it, consider purchasing the parts to make it through the links in the description below this video. Since I don't post very regularly on my YouTube channel, consider subscribing with the notification bell on to stay tuned for when I post the next exciting video. Thank you guys for watching till the end. Peace.